Hello, Edward Smith here from 088. In this session, we're going to be looking at the record options. So the record options, let's take a look at them now. They're these options here that open on the external monitor when you tap record. Now, if you're um, maybe new and not necessarily familiar to recording cues, um, go check out the, uh, some other training sessions first. Go and check out the uh, the training sessions that go through recording cues because what we're going into today is kind of some of the more complex settings and understanding how we can start to get very specific with what gets recorded but also what doesn't get recorded um, into our cues. So if, if, do go and check out our other, the other sessions on recording cues um, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're more new to recording cues on the console. But otherwise, let's dive in and explore these record options and, and what they're all about. First things first, well, I'm running Phantom Xeros. Uh, Xeros is the software platform that runs across all of our uh, consoles, including the Flex range of lighting consoles. Um, and Phantom Xeros is, uh, allows me to emulate any of our Xeros consoles uh, on, my, on my laptop. So currently, as you can see, I am emulating a Flex console. At top right of the window, uh, I've got capture visualization software running. So uh, just so we can uh, see, see our changes, see what we're up to, we can see those reflected in the capture visualizer. So before we dive in and actually have a look about what, what all of these options are and, and, what, and what we have available to us, let's talk about the window itself. Let's talk about the window itself, how we can access it. By default, the record options window will open when you tap record and it will open on the external monitor. If you're using a flex range console without an external monitor, uh, or you're using Flex S24, for example, uh, you can press and hold record, and that will open the record options on your internal touchscreen. So press and hold record, it will open it on the internal touchscreen so that you can access the options. Uh, but that can be configured further. So if I go into setup, press my setup key, go to settings. At the bottom here, I have a, uh, a, a few record and update options. And as you can see, I've actually got some uh, window options here. As I said, the default will be set to external display, uh, but when I press and hold record, that can open it on the internal display. I can force it to use both displays if I wish. So it always opens on both displays or I can limit it to just the internal display. That's useful if you're going ahead and recording um, straight into the Palettes desktop on the external monitor, because that means that when you press record, uh, it doesn't open, meaning you can access all of the uh, uh, screen externally. I'm gonna cancel record command and go back into setup go to settings, and if you want to, you can limit it so it only opens when held. Uh, for the purpose of this though, I'm gonna say external display. Now these tra options here, tracking options, we're gonna explore those later, um, but it's just worth mentioning. If you're in queue only, I'm gonna come out of setup. When you press record, you're gonna have a greatly limited set of record options. So as you can see there, press record, the record options have far fewer options in there. And that's because you're in global queue only. You can actually see you're in global queue only. It will tell you bottom right of your uh, your queues window here. Um, I'll explain a bit more about that as we go through, but for the purpose of this, we're going to have tracking options enabled. That's going to allow us to get, have access to all of the various settings. So I'm going to tap setup to come out of the settings. Uh, and now let's open those record options and start to take a look. Now, by default, the two options in here that will be enabled is smart tag and Q only. They're enabled, you can see that with the little red stripe on their button, that means they're enabled. So let's explore smart tag. Let's talk about the smart tag function as it's a really 
useful tool and also pretty fundamental to everything you program on the console. So the key kind of thing, the kind of the uh, fundamental thing that Smart Tag will do is it will basically ensure that what you see on stage is what gets recorded. Simple as that. It will ensure what you see on stage is what gets recorded into your queue um, or palette or palette as well. So that means it's going to look at every light and it's going to go, okay, well, I need to include you to create the lighting state, or it'll actually go, oh, well, I don't need to include you. So in my particular example here, I'm going to open my front panel. I've got a lighting state on stage at the moment, and it's coming from this playback here. If I tap record, and I then go and tap, tap an empty playback, the console's going to go, ah, well, currently on stage is all of these fixtures in blue, and so I'm going to include those in the queue. I'm not going to include all of the fixtures that don't have a value. So if I go and record this lighting state, the console has recorded all of the values that were present, but it's ignored fixtures that were untouched. So by no means, when you press record and record lighting state, are you essentially snapshotting the output of your console. By default, you will not be just essentially taking a snapshot of the output of your console. Smart Tag is, is actually deciding for you what needs to get recorded and what doesn't. Um, and that's really helpful because not only is our Smart Tag deciding what gets recorded, crucially it decides what not to include. And that means you can be far more effective when it comes to mixing playbacks. Just think, if, if every lighting state you recorded included every light, well, every one of those lighting states is going to be always fighting all of the time over which one has control of your lights. Whereas actually, if only the bits that are required gets recorded, it allows you to mix those playbacks much more effectively because it means that each playback is only worrying, it's only controlling the bits that matter to it. So that's why Smart Tag is really useful. What else will Smart Tag do for us? Well, we've mentioned there, it will include, it will basically include whatever's on stage. So if I've got a playback there, but also I go and manually turn on a couple of lights, if I now go and record that to a new lighting state, Smart Tag has gone, ah, right, well, at the point of recording, you had a playback up, so I'm going to include that for you, and it says, ah, and you also had some manual values, and so it's included those as well. What else will Smart Tag do? Well, another thing Smart Tag does is it aids with Move on Dark. Okay, so Move on Dark, um, if you're not familiar with it, Basically, it will always be running in the background of any playbacks you've programmed. And it means that, let's do a quick example. If I turn on some lights, record that to a queue, turn those lights off, record that queue, turn those lights back on, put them in a colour, put them in a position, record that as my next queue. Now let's play that back and run it through. First queue, turns the lights on, press go, the next queue fades those lights off. And you'll notice in my output window, I've got a grey background to those fixtures. And that's because those fixtures have been automatically prepped. They have moved on dark, ready for the next queue. And that means that when I go into Q3, all I see is the intensity rays, the colour and the position information prepped already. Let's see that again. Let's see it in a bit more detail. So if I select those fixtures, in Capture, you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly what's going on. I'm going to press my Go button. Those lights fade off. And watch. They then move in dark. They're prepped in dark because the console's gone, right, okay, well, I'm not using these fixtures. They're at zero. They're off. I'm not using them. I can therefore prep them for when they're used later on. And that's what it's done here. Now, Smart Tag is helping move on dark out. 
because by default smart tag will ignore any values for fixtures if the fixture is at zero percent. So let's see that happening. If I go and select that those groups a lot, that group of lights again as well. Select those. I'm going to put them in a position. They're obviously off at the moment, but I can see they've moved, and I'm going to put them in a color. If I go and record that now to a lot to a playback, that's recorded into my playback. If I now raise that playback and select those lights again, nothing's happened. They're still in their default. If I go and turn their intensity on right now, they haven't taken that position and the color information. And that is purely because smart tag was on. And the smart tag made the decision, right, well, you're not using the light. It's, a, it's off. It's a 0%. And therefore... I won't worry about including the color, beam, shape, or position information. And it's done that so that if you're in a Q-stack scenario, whenever that light goes to zero, there's no other information for that fixture. And therefore, the console is able to prep that fixture ready for when it's next used. If instead, I'm going to delete this playback and we'll repeat it, but this time without smart tag on, Let's go again, 1 through 10, at at, record the queue. I'm now going to turn those lights off, but let's say that I had them in a position somewhere, and I had them in a colour somewhere, and I'm going to record that in dark. And I'm now going to turn those lights back on, and this time I want them back in my blue downstage. And record that. Let's play it back. There we go, there's Q1. They then fade to Q2, and you saw that move. And they've then been able to move on dark. So you can see there that our manual values tracked as we faded through. Now watch what happens now. Now we've released the playback and run through. Go into the next queue. We see that fade again. And then we see a live move. If we'd have had smart tag enabled when we recorded Q2, the console would have gone, ah, well the lights are at zero. Therefore I can ignore color and position so that you don't see beams swinging all over the place from as those lights get from one place to the other. So that's why smart tag, that's one of the, another reason that smart tag is really helpful. It, it, when a fixture is at 0%, the only thing it records about that fixture is it being at 0%. Everything else is, is, is not recorded, meaning that move on dark can then work. Now, another thing move on, uh, another thing that smart tag uh, does is it won't include a particular value for a fixture if that fixture's value hasn't changed from what it was doing previously. So what we mean by that is if I'm in this particular queue here, if I record with smart tag on into the next queue, notice I get no fade times. So this time the console has not recorded the fact that they are at full, in blue, or in that position. It hasn't got any information about that in the queue. And the reason for that is because they're doing it already. There's no point to tell a light there's no point telling a light to do something that it's doing already. And therefore smart tag is uh, just leaving those lights doing what they were doing already. It hasn't told them to go to blue because they're in blue already. Now, the reason that is really useful is it means you can be really effective with your tracking because it is not recording what we call blocks. We'll go in more in detail in tracking in a bit, but just to give you that example, if I turn tracking on, and we will explain that, go in a bit more in depth in this, if I select those fixtures this time make them red and update Q3.
and now go into Q4, they stay red. Because when you recorded Q4, you recorded it with smart tag, the fixtures were already doing exactly what they were doing previously, and so the console didn't store any information. We've now got an updated Q3, and because Q4 doesn't have any information, well, because the fixtures are in, in red in Q3, 4 doesn't give them any new instructions, and so they continue doing what they were doing already. And that is a really powerful tool, because it means you can update loads of queues really easily all at once, in one single operation. So, yeah, it's actually a really useful tool, but of course, also, it can get you in a bit of a pickle, because now my Q4, if I wanted that to be blue, well, actually, I've ended up with those lights being in red. Now, that is, leads us very neatly on to the tracking option. If I'd have updated Q3 in Q-only mode, I would have only affected Q3. As the name suggests, if you adjust a Q with Q-only, you only affect that clip, that Q. The other ones remain exactly how you program them. So if this time I go into Q3, I'm actually going to set it back to grab control of those fixtures, make them blue again, update the Q. I'm going to update with tracking again, because if I update with tracking, the fixtures in, that, in Q4 are now blue again. Updated Q3 to blue, it's automatically fixed Q4 for me. Going to Q3, make them red. This time, update the Q, but Q only. Watch what happens. Notice how we now have timings appear. They weren't there previously. We now have timings appear, and that's because the console has gone, you've made a change to Q3, that only affects Q3. Therefore, Q4, I need to, it, therefore the console is updating Q4 to make sure that it stays as it was. So if we now go into Q4, it now goes back to that blue color. So if you update a Q with Q only, Actually, what you're doing, or what the console's doing in the background, is it's updating two queues. Because it, first of all, makes your changes to the queue you're working on, but then it actually undoes your changes in the next queue to make sure that your next queue is exactly how you programmed it. And that's where Smart Tag is helping you out because. Smart tag is helping you out because it allows you to use tracking effectively. And you can then go into your record options and use the tracking options to adjust that. Let's do an, another example to be clear. I'm going to delete my master playback. Turn those fixtures on. Uh, what should we do? Actually, let's, let's keep things even more simple. Let's just have a single light on and I'm going to record that. And I'm just going to go through that process now, record each of those fixtures to their own queue. Okay. So I'm just going to snap through those queues. As you can see, I've just got some really simple queues that control each light in turn. Now, if I want to make a change to this queue, if I want to add in light number six, for example, so if I do six at at, I now need to be very aware of my tracking options. So you'll notice the record and the update options share the same options. They are the same options. You can just access them from both windows. So, yep, there's a smart tag button, and yep, there's the smart tag button, and you've also got your tracking options, and the tracking options are in there. So they're the same options in both the record and the update windows. So if I update this queue with track forwards, you might have uh, worked out what's going to happen here. 
that light is added in, but it's also in Q2, and it's now in Q3, and it's now in Q4. And that's because Qs 2, 3, and 4 had no information for light number 6. At the point of recording them, we had not told light number 6 to do anything, therefore it was just quite happily left to its own devices, it was quite happily doing what it was doing, and it, in, in that case it was actually off. Now we've added it in to Q1, well again, Q2 had no instruction for it. It's leaving that light doing whatever it was doing, and in this case it means it's now on. Now we can actually see that indicated by the purple value in the output window. That means it's a tracked value. It is on, it's just doing whatever it was doing previously. Now, if we go into Q1, I can repair this situation by selecting fixture 6, turning it off, update, and do a track forwards update. And that will therefore then make sure that it takes it out of all of the subsequent queues. And I've now repaired my queues. Let's do the example this time, but this time I'm going to use light 7, update, Q only. And now, what that's done is I mentioned earlier, when you update Q only, the console actually is updating two queues simultaneously. We've seen that happen here. The console's added light 7 into Q1, but it's actually then added it into Q2 as well because it's told it to go off. So Q2 now has an instruction for light number 7 to turn it off. And because we updated Q1, Q only, we've therefore just added that light into the single Q. It's only on in Q1 now. And so hopefully you can see there tracking in action. We can see that tracking behavior happening. Let's do another example. This time I'm gonna add in light eight and I'm going to update it, track forwards. And that light eight is now tracking through all those cues. Maybe these four cues, picture this, maybe it's a scene, you've got four cues in a scene and you realized for the whole scene, you needed to add a light in. Well, I've just added the one light into the first cue and it's tracked through them. If I go into cue three and I go and say, Fixture 8 at full, tap record and tap my master playbacks button. Uh, sorry, I'm going to update that, sorry. Tap update and tap my master playbacks button. Notice it goes back to being a purple. Because smart tag is on, and remember one of the options of smart tag, one of the features of smart tag is it doesn't record fixtures that are just doing what they're doing already. It, will, it, won't, it won't tell a light to do something it's doing already. SmartTag didn't actually include an instruction to turn that light on to 100%. Now, that means that if I now go and update that uh, Q1 again, but this time I'm going to tell the light to go to, I don't know, 75%, update it, track forwards, the light's now at 75 through all of my queues. Now, if I'd have updated Q3 without smart tag, so this time I'm gonna say Q3 at at, uh, or let's, let's set it to 75 actually, uh, fixture eight at 75. So this time I'm telling it to go to a value it's at already. This time I'll update without smart tag And I now get a white. And that is our block. So, as the name suggests, Q3, or, or that light, eight, light number 8 in Q3, is now blocking the tracking. Okay, it's now blocked the tracking. And that's what a white value is. A white value is essentially saying, well, I've been told to do something that I'm doing already. That's what a white value is. Okay. And so it means now that if I now go and change that value again, let's say I put it back to 100% and update the queue, 
Yes, that's tracked through into Q2, but Q3 now has a hard value. And so Q3 now will take it to 75%. I wouldn't have been able to do that without disabling smart tag. Because I said smart tag will not tell a light to do something it's doing already. Whereas I disabled smart tag and I was then able to do that. Notice it's now displayed in a green, not a white, because that light has now faded down. So it was in a purple 100, because that value had tracked from Q1. Q3 then tells it to go to 75, and as that's a value that's faded down, values that fade down are displayed in green. Q4, well, it's tracked now. It's now tracking from Q3. So it's now at 75%. So that is tracking. And it's not only that, but it's how tracking and smart tag can kind of sit hand in hand and how they work together. Okay. Worth clarifying. By default, smart tag and queue only will be enabled. And that means that the console is doing the work for you, working out what lights need to be included. And it's in queue only, meaning when you make changes to queues, you're only affecting the queue you're working on. So if this is all a bit alarming to you, you don't need to worry by default because the console will be in smart tag in queue only. But as you can see, you have got that 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 flexibility to disable smart tag. You're the one deciding what gets recorded. And then, of course, you can use your tracking options for really flexible updating multiple queues at once. Let's talk about track backwards. If I'm in Q4 and I realise, ah, this whole scene would have been better with light number nine in it, I can update the queue, track backwards. Let's see that happening. If I go into Q1, it's now in in Q1. So when I updated the Q4 with track backwards, the console looked up the Q list to see where it can add that light in. So it will go up the Q list and see kind of the most, it will get as far as it can until that light was given an instruction. It will of course never overwrite a hard instruction. If you've recorded a light to do something, if you've told it to be at a value, tracking won't overwrite that. But track backwards has sent that update for that light back up the Q stack. And so now it's on in all of my queues again. Okay. So that is open those record options that's smart tag and that's the tracking options how about snapshot let's talk about snapshot let's have a change let's talk about snapshot so essentially with functions you've got three functions snapshot smart tag or disabled that's what you've got that's what you've got to play with we talked about smart tag and, and smart tag being disabled let's talk about snapshot so as the name suggests, Snapshot will take essentially a picture of all of the values currently being sent from the console and record that into your queue. And that is absolutely fine if you want to make sure that, right, whatever happens when I go into this queue, I want the current lights to be on stage. So if I go into um, Q1 now, I'm now going to snapshot the current lighting state into Q5. Absolutely everything has been included, including beam, shape, and position information. And as I go through these queues, you can see that Q5 is exactly how we recorded it. And again, we've got those white values. Remember the white, the blocked values, that is telling you that that light has been told to go to a value that it was already at. Okay. So snapshot does indeed snapshot everything. Um, that's almost true, but don't see it as just snapshotting whatever the DMX values happen to be. The reason for that is if you've got an effect running, it won't just snapshot and pause the effect. 
it will just record the fact that there's an effect running okay so don't see it in that it's literally taking a snapshot of the dmx output but what it's doing is it's recording every single parameter in your console and including that into a queue very useful but can also be a nightmare if you overuse snapshot again you're going to get into the get into the uh, the issue where you're going to have a bit of a nightmare when it comes to mixing because if you snapshot all of your playbacks all of the playbacks will include all key, all of the fixtures in your show and therefore again you're going to get into the scenario where they're fighting over each other so don't overuse snapshot i guess is the best way of looking at it so that is snapshot and we've talked about smart tag and also disabling smart tag so another thing to just mention on smart tag i've kind of been mentioning throughout this with smart tag enabled the console decides with smart tag disabled you decide and you might be thinking okay well how do i decide if i'm if smart tags disabled if i'm the one picking and choosing what gets recorded how do I decide? That's primarily done through tagging. If I go and turn a fixture on, I have tagged it. The red intensity percentage in your output window means that light is tagged. If I open my internal touchscreen and I move a color parameter, notice my encoders go from having a dark background to a highlighted a lighter blue background whenever you manually adjust a parameter it will tag and that's what the blue background is indicating okay it is automatically tagged for you and therefore even if you've got smart tag disabled you're still going to be able to record your cues absolutely fine because as you go through and work through the console it's automatically tagged things for you now you'll notice in this case here, I moved blue, but all color parameters have tagged. Now, the reason for that is the console um, has not separated the parameters. So it means if I adjust any of them, all of them tag. And the reason for that is, you know, in this example here, to create this color on stage, I need that level of red, that level of green, that level of blue, that level of white. So they all work together. So I need to make sure, really, that they all get included, unless I'm being quite specific. If I want to make sure that when I adjust blue, only blue tags, go into your attribute settings. So I'm going to hold set up and tap color. And you've got this option here. You can say, yes, I do want to separate my parameters. And now... I'll double tap clear, select that light again. If I adjust one of those parameters, only the one I adjusted has tagged. I'm going to go and put that back to default though. So when you go and use colors, when you adjust the color picker, you know, whatever you do, it will automatically tag values for you. But you can then choose to start to untag things. And if you untag a value, it then won't get recorded. If smart tag's disabled, it's really important to be aware of. All of this is applicable when smart tag's disabled. If smart tag's enabled, the console will decide. You don't really have a say in what gets recorded. But with smart tag disabled, you can. So if you want to untag or tag parameters, you can actually click. You can just click on the touchscreen on the parameter name and that will tag, tag and untag it. If you want to tag or untag a whole attribute, hold clear and tap the attributes button. So if I hold clear and tap color right now, you can see there that I am able to tag or untag everything about color. Okay. So that's how you can tag or untag a whole attribute. Now I mentioned that if I move one color encoder, the rest of them tag. That is also the same case for position. If you use, if you move pan by default, tilt will tag as well. That isn't the case for be more shape. So if I were to go and adjust zoom, for example, that's not going to affect 
any of the other parameters. So currently, right now, with obviously my smart tag is disabled, if I were to record this lighting state right now, only zoom out of these parameters will be getting stored into that queue because that's the only one that's tagged. Now, a useful tool when it comes to tagging and untagging is the ability to not include intensity. So in some cases, you might want a fixture to be in a particular color, in a particular position, um, but for whatever reason, you might want intensity to not be included in this same playback that records the fixture's color and position. So what I can do is I can tap my Z button on the console and you'll see here that my I've got my intensity wheel. If I go and tap the middle button, that will untag intensity for me. And so if I now go and record this, smart tag disabled, to a lighting state, to a playback, double tap clear, raise that playback's fader, You'll see there, the light has moved, it's in its colour, but there's no intensity. Even though intensity was on when I actually recorded that cue. And if I turn intensity on manually, you can see, yep, that's in its colour and the position that I defined. Okay, so that's tagging. And again, that's where you can start to go and get very specific because you can manually tag. And if smart tag is disabled that means that your manual tagging takes effect. So we've talked about these tracking options. We talked about how we can really easily update queues and we've started to talk about some of the other options in here. If you go into setup and force the console into queue only, you don't have access to the smart tag button or the tracking options. And that means you're very limited on what you can do. So basically, the best way I like to describe this setting is kind of like, well, it's almost like beginner or, or advanced mode, really, in that if you're in queue-only mode, really the only reason you want to do that is if you want to be doing very simplistic programming and you don't, uh, and you don't, uh, and you don't want to worry about accidentally enabling an option that will change what gets recorded. That, that's kind of why that option is there. Whereas if you do want access to those options, if you do want to be able to, you know, diving into the tracking options, changing whether smart tags enabled or not, you're going to need to make sure that the tracking options are enabled. Don't let that frighten you though. A again, worth clarifying, even if it says tracking enabled down here, if you're in queue only mode, you will only be affecting the current queue you're working on. So that is just worth clarifying. Next thing we've got in the record options are these filtering. So we've got fixtures, parameters, and attributes. They are filters. We can filter down further what gets recorded. Now, again, if smart tag is enabled, the console's the one deciding what gets recorded, and therefore they're going to be greyed out. If the console's deciding what gets recorded, they're greyed out. If you disable smart tag, you can then be the one that decides what gets recorded. So if I go in and let's say that I've gone in and I'm just going to turn some lights on, let's put them in a colour again. Put them in a position. And let's say, ah, okay, well, I've got this lighting state on stage, but I only want to include fixtures five and six in the queue that I'm recording. I can select fixtures five and six only. And in my record options, I can choose to only record the selected fixtures. So rather than the console doing its job of working out what's been tagged, Instead, I can limit it to just be selected fixtures. Of those selected fixtures, I can then limit it down further. So I can actually say, well, yes, I want the selected fixtures, but 
everything about the selected fixtures I want to get included. So rather than just recording the tagged parameters, so i.e. I've adjusted intensity, colour and position, I could actually include all parameters. I could force it to you include zoom and beam and all the rest of the other parameters as well. And so if I now go and record that, double tap clear, I've now just recorded those pair of fixtures because that's what was selected at the point of recording. So that's really useful because if you've, you know, it one example might be that for a couple of cues you have to have the house lights on in your venue. Well, if you need to for those particular cues, turn the house lights on manually, but then select everything apart from the house lights and then record the selected fixtures only. As well as your fixtures and parameters, you've then got your attribute filters. So you can then go in and filter by attributes. Now, what you see here will depend on what you've currently got on stage. So at the moment, I've done a double tap of clear, I've cleared my programmer, and so all of these attributes are currently with a blue stripe, meaning disabled. There's nothing currently tagged, nothing's therefore currently selected. But if I go in and, again, turn my fixtures on, put them in a colour, put them in a position, and I then go and say, record, the console's gone, ah, right, well, intensity's been tagged, position has been tagged, colour has been tagged, but beam, shape, and also any effects, they haven't been adjusted, so I'm not going to include those. But at the point of recording, I could say, actually, no, please do include the current zoom position into this queue, so I can go and click beam. Uh, or equally, I could bring shape or effects into the mix as well. Now, you notice there, I tapped it again, and it went green. So, by default, as we've seen already, the console, if you've got smart tag disabled, will include tagged parameters only. So if I've just adjusted um, Zoom, for example, let's do an example of that now. I'm just going to cancel the record command by tapping record. If I go and dial in the Zoom parameter, tap record, yep, there we go, Beam's got a red stripe. Because that means that it's going to be including any tagged parameters in Beam. If I click it again, it's going to be including all Beam parameters not just the tagged ones. So that's actually, again, I'm going to cancel the record command. If I have been, uh, the beam uh, attribute set with a green stripe there, that will also manually be including the shutter, whatever other parameters we have. Let me open that so you can see it a bit better. It will be also including the shutter, dimmer curve, and reset parameters as well, if I make that go green. So that's where you can go down even further and actually rather than going through and manually tagging you can actually tap record and then start to filter afterwards if you want to. Now I mentioned that basically you know you've got your smart tag button uh, in the record option you've got your tracking options um, you've also got your filters you also have access to those in the update options. So, if you're actually making a change to an existing queue, you have all of those options exactly the same way as if you're actually recording a fresh queue. Okay. Now, something you do have as well, one of the last buttons that we'll cover today, is the remove button, which is also available in record and the update options. But this is especially useful when updating because it allows you to remove fixtures from queues. And let's have a look at that now. Um, let's say, I'm going to try and find a queue. What should we do? Um, yeah, that'll do. That's fine. Let, let's, say, let's say we've got this fixture here. What I can do is... Actually, let me try and find a better example for you. Let's... Yeah, let me block fixture 9. 
So in Q3, I'm going to block fixture 9. So I'm going to go and say 9 at at record with tracking smart tag disabled, which means I am able to record blocks and I'm going to, uh, and I'm going to update that queue. I've blocked it, it goes white. It therefore then continues tracking from Q3. I might though want to remove the block. I might want to remove that fixture from the queue so that that queue has no instructions for that light. If you want to remove a whole fixture, select it and home it. Remember, homing a fixture tags every parameter. Tells the console you want, you care about every single one of those fixtures parameters. So I've selected the fixture, I've homed it, I'm going to tap update, and then choose remove. And that is removing anything that's tagged, and it's going to be removing it from the queue you're working on. And you can see here Q3 is displayed in my update options. And I can then go ahead, and because it's going to track forwards, it's going to remove it from um, the subsequent the subsequent queues until it's given a new instruction, of course. Um, this won't remove that fixture's information from any future queues where it's got hard values. So if I go ahead and do this now, it goes from a white to a purple, meaning that now if I want to update that fixture's value further up the queue stack, update it, it's now updated through all of the queues. It wasn't blocked by Q3 anymore. It's not been blocked by Q3 anymore. So I hope that makes sense and that's where the remove tool is really useful for how you can remove fixtures. So if you do an update remove, you are removing anything that's currently tagged. Whereas by default, you're usually merging anything that's currently tagged. Okay, so that's what we mean by using the remove function. Great stuff. Last thing I'll kind of mention uh, in this session, I hope you found it useful. Um, do get in touch if there's any questions. Last thing I'll talk about is actually using some of these options with palettes. So using some of these options with palettes, not just cues that affect these options, it's palettes as well. So first things first, you can snapshot a palette. So if I go one through 10, at at, color 10, position three, and let's say, okay, well, everything about that, I want to include into a palette. Now, by default, if you just go and record into a palette, so if I record into a position palette, you're only recording position. We're quite happy with that. That's what the little P stands for there. But if I now go and do a shift record, I get ICB SPE, intensity, color, beam, shape, position, and effect. Everything about this current lighting state on stage has been recorded into that palette. And so therefore this time, if I double tap clear, I'm gonna go and say one through 10, enter, apply my palette, and they then go to that position because they've included everything about that lighting state. And you can record a snapshot palette. So that was, remember, I just did a shift record when I recorded that palette, or I could have actually chosen snapshot in the record options and chose and recorded my palette. I can record that into any attribute type. So I could have recorded that into color palettes. I could have recorded it into beam palettes. I could have record, recorded it into shape palettes or position. It doesn't matter. It would have recorded everything about that current lighting state into my palette. Another thing I can use palettes for is to copy data from one fixture to another. So if I select fixture one, turn it on to full, put it in a color, put it in a position, and I think, right, I want to transfer that information to another fixture of the same type. Tap record, say that you want to record the, select, the selected fixtures and all parameters. So you can kind of word it the other way around. You say you want to record all parameters of the selected fixtures and you want to put that in position palette 16. 
I can now go and select another one of the fixtures of the same type, select fixture three, or I can select fixture six, doesn't matter, tap my palette, and it then goes to exactly the same values as what I um, had when I recorded fixture one. So I've actually copied those that information across using a palette. Another thing you can do when you using the record options is you can include extra data in a palette from other attributes. So you can include other attributes into a palette. So again, I'm just going to use this particular color in this posi particular position because it's quite helpful. I'm going to say 1 through 10, enter. And I'm going to say I want um, them turned on in color 10 and in position 2. But actually, I want to include both color and position into a color palette. Well, to do that, what you can do is you can tap record tap the color button because what you've done there is you've told the console and you can see it in the command line record color so you're saying I want to record a color palette but using the record options I want to add in position so you're saying I want to record a color palette but I also want to add in position and you can then include a palette a uh, tap a palette to store that too and now you'll see that's annotated with CP only. It hasn't included intensity, hasn't included zoom, but it has included the color and the position value of that particular light. And so that is using uh, the record options to record palettes. One last note on smart tag. And one of the questions we get asked all of the time is why can't I record my default values? So to record fixture defaults, you set the fixtures to the values you need them to be at by default, tap record, and then tap the home button. And you can then choose to store that as the fixtures defaults. Remember, one of those key rules of smart tag is it will not include fixtures values if the fixture is at zero. Remember, the key reason for that is so, it, so that move on dark can work. But that means that if I go right now and say 1 through 10, enter, and actually I want them to be in color palette 10 by default, if I record that with smart tag on and record that as my fixtures defaults, if I then do a shift and clear, you'll see that, oh, actually, no, that hasn't been included. That didn't get recorded. And that was because smart tag was on and going, right, well, the fixtures intensities are at zero. Therefore, I will not include them. So if you want to customize fixture defaults with the fixture being at zero percent, of course, remember, just like recording anything else with on the console, if you want to record the fixtures at zero percent, disable smart tag. So this time I'm going to say I want these fixtures in color 10. I want them in position two. I'm going to record that smart tag disabled as the fixtures defaults. This time, double tap clear, one through 10, at at, they're in that color and position by default. And so there we are. That is everything I wanted to cover today. So I hope that's been useful. It is quite a complex subject and it's diving in really to how the console thinks. Um, and so I hope you found it useful for your programming. Um, key rules. To be, aware of, to be aware of as a wrap-up. Snapshot, don't overuse it. It's a very useful tool, but don't overuse it because it will mean you can't mix playbacks effectively. Smart tag will ignore fixtures at zero to allow move on dark to work. And it will also not include blocks. It won't tell a fixture to do something it's doing already. Tracking options. Very powerful tool to allow you to update multiple queues at once. Queue only means you will only be affecting the queue you're currently in. Those are kind of the key takeaways um, from this session. So I hope you found that useful.
Um, if you've got any questions, as I said, please do get in touch. Drop us an email to support at 088.com and uh, we'll be able to help you out. That's no problem at all. And um, yeah, hope you found that useful. Any feedback, send us an email to training at 088.com. But otherwise, see you on the next session. Thank you very much.